This program is sponsored by the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media. says then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who are ready, they went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Verse 13, watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Revelation 19 verse number 6. The Bible says, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering saying hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigns let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamp has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, This are the true sayings of God. Precious Father, thank you. We glorify your name because you are a wonderful Father unto us. 
Above all, you are preparing a bride for your son. We thank you because you have called us to this marriage supper. And Lord, we pray that you will not find us unprepared, but you will find us ready. I pray for every man and woman that is under the sound of my voice. That this is the hour to examine our position in you. And I pray, dear Father, that any darkness and any obstacles that have stood to cause many not to move forward in the knowledge of God, may all those obstacles be moved out. That your children may be prepared for this great day. We exalt and magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody shouted, Amen. The question this day is, are you ready for this marriage supper? There is a party, there is a banquet set. The Lord has prepared a banquet. And it's not just an ordinary banquet. It is a banquet that celebrates the wedding of his own son to the bride he lived and suffered for. He paid a dear bride price for her. With his own blood, he died for her. And this is the hour that the bride has got to ask herself, am I ready for the wedding? Am I ready for the wedding? The message is, behold, the bridegroom is coming. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. The question is, as the bridegroom is ready, he's been prepared for over 2,000 years now. And he is working day and night, equipping his servants, giving them the necessary tools to prepare his bride. We looked at the book of Esther this morning where the king wanted a wife. The Bible says in chapter 2 of the book of Esther that many ladies were brought into the chamberlains. They were brought to be chosen whether they are worthy to become the queen, to become the wife of the king. Inside there were maids who were to help them to beautify their lives, to give them all that they needed and Esther qualified to be among those who are favored. Not because she was just beautiful on the outside. But because this girl had an inner beauty. She was not just going there like ordinary people. She wasn't presenting herself for this very important exercise based on her outside beauty. She was intelligent. She was beautiful in the inside. She was upright. She was holy. She was a prayerful woman. She presented herself not as any other. And by her presence before the eunuch that was given responsibility to prepare these ladies for the great celebration that the king has set. His name is Higai. The Bible says that Higai looked at this woman and favored her. May you receive favor in this generation. And so the Bible says that um, she was given everything that was needed to prepare her for this great day. 
Verse 8 says, So it was when the king's command and decree were heard, and when many young women were gathered at Shushan, the citadel and the custody under the custody of Haggai, that Esther also was taken to the king's palace into the care of Haggai, the custodian of the women. So, for a king to receive a well-prepared, polished queen or wife, he sends the Haggai's whose job is to purify. And every day we meet in this place and other places that he, God has raised the anointing of he guys across the globe. They are the he guys of our time whose job is to beautify this bride. Whose job is to prepare this bride. But you need to know that how the bride also presents herself before the he guys, it matters on how prepared they will be by the time they are presented before the king. There were many who came into the palace. They all received equal treatment. They all stayed at equal time. They were all in the citadel. Every one of them was fed well, was given the right nutrition because there were people in charge of feeding them. There were people in charge of beautifying them. There were those Salunis are the beauty beauticians whose job was to massage and to beautify and to give them the right exercise and the right food and the right uh, nutrition for them to be ready to be presented. But not all qualified. Not all qualified. As much as they were Given the same. But I want you to know how you receive depends or it determines on your outcome. Because if you do not receive well, your output will be different. And Jesus is ready to come. But who is he coming for? As the son of God is prepared to come. Who is he coming for? Are you among those who qualify? Because he has given all of us equal opportunities. Is given all of us equal opportunities to prepare ourselves. And it's not just you being prepared alone or yourself. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. He is involved in the preparation. He himself, he is, he is doing what he has to do to prepare. And that's why he is co-working together with he guys. And in the days we are living in, those who are not found doing what he has assigned them to do in the purpose of preparing his own bride, you may find them on the roadside. Because there are two companies of people that God is raising now. Not just powerful preachers. He's not interested in mighty men with big titles. He's not interested in how we present ourselves in pomp 
and splendor and eloquence it is in the heart of humility that is able to hear what the master is saying knowing what is his interest and the ministers of our time I want you to know it is not about how good you preach it is about how your heart is towards the service of preparing the master's bride. It's not the eloquence. Paul says when I came to you, I did not come to you with eloquence of speech. Because I didn't need to know anything else except Christ and him crucified. So that your faith is not set on the pomp and the presentations of men. But in the power of God. And this is what is happening. I've said many times since the year began. That the Lord at the time we are living in. He is speaking up the nobodies. Those who never had titles. Those who never had any good education. Some of the people that God has used mightily. Like Wigglesworth. They were not educated. It is not the language. It is the power within. And the heart of wanting to do what God has called them to do. And where we are right now. He is raising up he guy, the team of he guy, and the team of those who are going to co-work with him as choice made servants. Humble, willing, ready, sacrificial, available, teachable, and those who are Willing to do what the master says. Because he says. He loves his church. And because he loves his church. Or his bride for that matter. He gave himself for her. Verse number 26 of that scripture says. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Somebody say by the word. Somebody shout by the word. There are those who several years ago they lifted their voices and they said Lord forgive my sins. Come into my life and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And they stopped them. Yes, the Lord forgave your sins. Yes, the Lord wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. Yes, the Lord has given you all that you need. But I want you to know it doesn't stop there. The Bible says you must walk your salvation with fear and trembling. You must present yourself holy and acceptable in his sight. As much as he is walking, but I want you to know this. If Esther was among those and she just became frivolous, if Esther would not prepare herself, her heart, and be what was expected of her, and listen carefully to his guide, Esther would still be among the others. What God is calling you to be is that you should not be common. He wants you to be extraordinary. Our God wants you to be peculiar. God wants you to be above the bar. Not in the average status. In your walk with him. 
the Lord is not intending to have averages. He wants to have those people who have desired, whose heart is craving to be better than where they used to be. Those who have recognized that this God is greater than anything else. Esther would have missed it. I'm using Esther just for us to understand how important it is for you. When Esther knew that she is in the competition and she knew that I have a fiance or a husband that is coming and this husband has his qualities his choice qualities that he needs in me. Esther did not take her life lightly. I wish somebody was here this afternoon. If you understand the qualities that is expected in you, and it is not you that is building those qualities, it is him that is working in you, both to will and to do according to his own pleasure. But you must be willing. I say you must be willing. Because he's preparing the wedding, he's also preparing the bride. Are you going to be among those counted worthy? By grace you are saved. But you also need to know that you have to walk as is worthy the Lord. You need to walk worthy of this master. You need to walk worthy of being the bride to this great king. That's why Esther didn't take things lightly. She walked knowing that I will listen to he guy. I will be available to he guy. And what he guy tells me because this he guy always listens to what the master wants. Every morning God is raising his servants. They spend hours in his presence to hear what does the master want me to go and say to his bride. Just like he guy, he guy would go and present a report every day. And it says, these are the number that already are in my chamberlain. And I'm preparing them. And the master would say, please make sure that they have this and this and this and these qualifications. So when you hear a man of God who has a voice and ear for God speak, you better pay attention. I say you better pay attention because we have too many people who are giving too many good stories that are entertainment. They'll tell you all kinds of things. But are those things preparing you for the great day? This morning I asked those ladies who have gone through preparation for the wedding. And those who answered, they said, it is work. You just can't go and uh, sit and play around with boys and expect that that day is coming and when it comes, you're not even set. It takes prayer. It takes energy. You know, these days we are watching my perfect wedding on television of men who backslid, got married, have five, six children and now they come and they say this is a perfect wedding. That's junk. I say again, that is called junk. The wedding the master is looking for is for virgins. Those 
those whose hearts are who have kept their lives for the Lord kept themselves holy and defiled that's what the Bible says he's sanctifying for himself Ephesians 5 26 he is sanctifying for himself not for any other he is sanctifying he is sanctifying them and he's cleansing her with washing of water by the word verse 27 so that he might present her to himself a glorious a glorious church a glorious bride not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish these are scriptures we can't bend them we can't short circuit them we can't add a thing to them it is him that has sent us to raise quality bride. I say a quality bride who walks in the fear of the Lord, who spends time in his presence, who washes herself. Her spirit is clean. Her mind is clean. Her heart is pure. She is not living a wicked life full of anger and wrath and bitterness and sin and unforgiveness. Looking forward for the glorious appearing for the master. Because that day will be so glorious. Is somebody listening to me? He is working in your life. I say he is working in your life. It is unfortunate that many believers have gone to sleep. Especially in this pandemic season. There is a demon spirit behind it that has put people to slumber. That he's giving you excuses. And these are excuses to make you be late so that you'll never be prepared when the master comes. Jesus never said he will come when things are wonderful, bright and the Bible says he will come at midnight. What is midnight? According to the scripture, it says they waited until the midnight is when he came. Midnight is the darkest hour of the night. It's the hour no, not many people expect. It's the dark hour. It's the time of change. So the Bible says at midnight he came. Jesus is not coming at the time that you have designed yourself. He is coming because there is somebody who is ready. So it is time for you to get out of slumber. Because there is a lot of spiritual sleep. The love of many people have gone cold. Matthew 24 verse number 12 he says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. So you have to be aware there is a heavy blanket that the enemy has released in this season of the pandemic across the globe and persecution is rising in many nations. In the Middle East, in Russia, in the Far East, in China, in some parts of Africa, in some of your homes, there is persecution rising. It is at a midnight hour. It is those who endure to the end that shall be saved. Those who stand strong. He says, verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
Are you going to be counted among those who will appear before the marriage supper? Blessed are those who will be found before or righteous or worthy to sit with the Lord on the marriage supper. First Timothy chapter 4, the Bible says verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. It says, the Spirit speaks expressly. And it says that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits. How many people today are being swayed by all manner of doctrines and being swayed by seducing spirits? That gives them more comfort than seeking to know the will and the purposes of God. Giving us things that entertain us. Because there is an itchy ear. Bible says, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. I just want you to know the kind of spirit that is here. So that you may choose where you want to be. Because... Everything we are going to be is by choice. Verse 1, the Bible says to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? This thing says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. He says, I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. And that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. And have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience. And you have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. He says, nevertheless, I have this against you. That you have left your first love. I have this against you. He is giving a description of the commitment of this church. Of this people or of this person. He says, I know your works. I know your patience. I know all that you have done. I know you have not accepted to be cheated by false apostles and false prophets. But he says, there is only one thing that is lacking in your heart. He says, this is one thing I have against you. You have left your first love. Are you still in love with your Lord? Are you still in love with your Lord? Jesus was frustrated. The day he rose from the dead and he had just had time with his disciples and they, they knew that he is now a reason. He is alive. And a time came when Peter, because he was not seeing him, he said, this master probably has already gone. And this Peter decided and he said, I go a fishing. <laughs> I like the statement. I go a fishing. I'm going to fish. In other words, I'm going back to my former life. I am going back to the, my, my former trade. It seems this business is too difficult to believe the master. Remember, when Jesus was walking with them, he was providing. He was giving them a place to sleep. He was feeding them. He was making sure that they are all comfortable. For three years, he walked with them. They didn't lack anything. And he told them, when I was with you, did I, 
Did you ever lack anything? They said no. And he just gave them a short test in Matthew 10 and he said to them, now I want to send you but don't carry any extra clothes. Don't carry a wallet in your pocket because where you are going it will be provided for. They didn't understand that language. That the just shall live by faith. Is somebody listening to me? The just shall live by his faith. This is what he was teaching them. But then, the Bible says when he left for a time, before he even went to be with the father for, uh, for a, a season, they said we are going to fish. And when Jesus came, he was frustrated. He prepared breakfast for them. When he saw them struggling and toiling in the sea, Jesus, without going to the same lake or the sea to fish, he took firewood, he lit a fire, and he took fish and began to cook fish for them. He prepared a breakfast for them while they were still toiling in the sea. And when he called them, Peter ran naked to him. And the Bible says that when he came, Jesus looked at him and he said, do you love me more than this? This is the same question this afternoon. Do you love Jesus more than these things that you are pursuing? Do you love Jesus more than all your pursuits? How much can you sacrifice for him? How much are you willing to give for him? How much time are you giving for him? If only five minutes prayer is difficult. One of the frustrations of Jesus is he looked at them when he was with them in the garden of Gethsemane as he was praying. He says, please pray. And he goes, they go to sleep. He comes back, they are snoring. And he looks at them and he says, can't you tarry with me for just one hour? Can't you just tarry with me in prayer for just one hour? When slumber overcomes, overwhelms a believer, prayer is the first culprit in that nature. Your prayer life goes and your reading of the Bible goes and then the fellowship of the brethren goes. Remember, Jesus is cleansing and purifying the bride using those very important elements, the word and prayer. The word. When coming to church is a problem to you, listen, you are equivalent to those people who went to wait for the master. They were loaded with the lamps without oil. Because oil talks about the Holy Spirit. It talks about the anointing. And let me tell you this. Anointing is dormant so long as you are dormant. You may be anointed. But so long as you have gone to sleep with the anointing upon your life. The devil will sit on your nose and you will not know. Because the key thing that Christ wants of you is activity. He wants to see you preparing the bride. There are prostitutes who have qualities in them but the devil has messed them up. And he's looking for the chosen made servants who can go there and they clothe them and tell them Jesus still loves you. Not judgmental believers who want to see who you nikahaba 
people have come to church and you look at another one and you say who you ni bure who you always survive who you walk of yake ni bandia nani alikupa hiyo kazi auliza nani alikupa hiyo kazi wewe ndio uko na spiritometer ya wengine ha Ezekiel 16 Ezekiel 16 The Bible says when I passed by you again and looked upon you indeed your time was the time of love so I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness yes I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you and you became mine says the Lord Then I washed you in water. Yes, I thoroughly washed off your blood and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you in the embroidered cloth and gave you sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with fine linen and covered you with silk. And this is expensive materials. He says and I put a jewel in your nose earrings in your ears and a clothing and beautiful crown on your head thus thus you were adorned with gold and silver and your clothing was of fine linen silk and embroidered clothing you ate pastry of fine flour honey and oil you were exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty mahashakandaya your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty for it was perfect through my splendor which i had bestowed on you says the lord this is how he clothed He is talking about Israel and the kind of love he manifested to them. But the Bible says in verse number 15, when they began to be beautiful after picking them from the miry clay and from the dirt of life and now they were his. The Bible says but you trusted now in your own beauty. You played the harlot because of your fame and poured out your harlotry on everyone passing by who would have it. There are many of us we were useless. We deserved to die. We were thrown into the gutters. Nobody would have admired us. Nobody would have given you a place even in their own kitchen. Nobody would have accepted you in any form. But then the Lord found you in that bloody mire. And he took you. I say he took you. That's why Paul is saying not many of you were wise. Not many of you were worthy anything. but by grace he picked us i say by grace he picked us and he washed us he anointed us the lord has clothed us now we can look like people when the lord picked me i was naked no clothes sitting in a prison cell no good food no place to sleep no shoes 60 people in a room locked up for days with one toilet no water nobody washed for days stinking but the lord still loved me Why should I now that I can put on a suit 
think that I'm anything. Kama siyo wewe Ninge kuwa wa Nini Kama siyo wewe Ninge kuwa wa Nini If it was not the Lord Why should we ever think now we are anything? Your age mates, school mates, work mates have died hopeless. Died of HIV, died of all kinds of mal maladies. Others have perished because of drunkenness and prostitution. Others have no name. It is not about their promotions. We have people with a lot of money but living a miserable life. But you without money in your pocket, you are still happy in the Lord. You still wake up with a song in your heart. When millions today are contemplating suicide, They wake up at night, count a number of pills they want to swallow. Because of hopelessness. But the Lord still loves you. Why shouldn't you adjust your level of love? Do you love me more than this? He says to Israel, I did the best for you. Because you reached a place that you qualified for royalty. You are a royal priesthood. But why are you still holding the word of God so lightly? I wish I had two more hours. Because this thing is heavy in my spirit. The church is playing games. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. He says, I clothed you in embroidered clothing. I washed you, verse 9. I washed you in water. I thoroughly washed off your blood. And I anointed you with oil. I clothed you in embroidered clothes and gave you sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with fine linen and covered you with, with silk. I adorned you with ornaments, put bracelets on your wrists and a chain on your neck. And I put a jewel in your nose, earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver and your clothing was of fine linen, silk and embroidered cloth. You ate well, pastry of fine flour, honey and oil. You are exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty. You succeeded to royalty. You qualified to be a royalty. But then why are you using my efforts, my grace, my love, my efforts that I have put to make you beautiful, presentable to me? Because listen, Jesus doesn't want to present or God doesn't want to present a useless bride to his son. There must be time of preparation. And he's using his servants to be available so that they may teach you but many people become too proud even to think of morning glory. Many people become too proud to think of coming to church. The demon spirit of religion should leave your house. Because these people that the Bible talks of in the book of Matthew chapter 25, they were both calling on the name of the Lord in the initial stages. There were ten 
Five wise, five foolish. They were born again. They were waiting for the master. But the wise took time to prepare themselves. They took time to be set. As much as they went to sleep. Because all of them went to sleep. Because of the delay. But they were set and ready. The other five, yes, they were in the same house. They were all waiting, expecting. Let me tell you, all religious people, whichever religion they are in, whatever creed or doctrine they believe in, including Muslims, they believe Jesus is coming. They believe that. But the difference is this. Are you ready? Are you ready? How active are you in the spirit? Are you walking in the spirit or walking in the flesh? It's time to wake up from slumber. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Ask yourself a question. If Jesus came now, what is my priority today? Who am I serving today? The things that I am doing, are they promoting my salvation? Are they promoting my spirituality? Or are they reducing the best that God has for me? From my life. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than life I've got something more than riches If all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I'll squirm it to the world Jesus is more areas that I have not walked upright and done what is expected of me. Thank you for your forgiving me. Help me from today to go back to my first love. Restore me, Lord, to the genuine pillars of spiritual walk with you. Give me the ability to go back to prayer and the word. In Jesus' name. Thank the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media for making this program possible.